just basically none, and then per, per pretending that they're gonna do something by um, all right buying going a, live too. <laughs> just saying, buying a, the, the, the what's it called domain. Yeah, ba yeah, basically they're just trolling people. All right, yeah, so happens. I will click on your stuff when we get there. Um, I already kind of know what I was talking about from my area of things. I am going to bring that up, though, because I haven't fully watched it. I'll probably actually have to watch that later. Because I watched like some of it the other day when it first dropped, and I... I just know that it's it looks it looks cool, but I know that it's just kind of like an April Fool's joke. Oh yeah. Also, I'm gonna pop on here. All right, so we are live. I'm gonna double check and make sure that we're live on Twitch. That's uh, funny. I think my... we posted that like three times. Posted what? The Bishop Ariana Grande thing. Well, you know, there's reasons for it. Oh, so hello, people. We're uh, doing some last-minute stuff while I'm trying to fucking figure out if we're goddamn live. Why is it not showing up on my phone? Will it show up on Twitch? I go to Twitch on my thing. Will it show up? It's showing up on mine. Okay, it's just not showing up on my phone, which is stupid. Phone, stop being stupid. The phone app is so slow sometimes. It takes so long for me to get in on my own damn streams. Uh, just so that I can freaking see things. All right, well, I'll fix it in a minute. Type, type, type. Okay, so protocol is I'm going to do the intro and intro song in like about... I will do a countdown and we will do that and then we'll go through the intro. Um, Mary will be introduced last because special guest... And we know the way that we go is by segments now, and I will try and uh, implement our new name into the title. Yay, okay. So, uh, three, or five, four, three, two, one. It's two minutes to midnight, and now we are here with your atomic silver lining here in the mushroom cloud. It's me, Diz Don. Frosty the Nerd. And Steve. And we have a special guest in the house tonight. Uh, can you introduce yourself, please? Hi, I'm Mary. I am uh, Frosty the Nerd's girlfriend. Hooray! So, yes, we got a full house in here today. And, uh,. It's been a week. <laughs> uh, definitely been a week. So, uh, how's everybody's week been? Just in general. Like, we'll, we'll do Steve and Tim, and then you'll introduce yourself, Mary, because you're new. Like, go over, like, what you're about a little, and how you know about nerdy, video gamey entertainment stuff, and, and we'll, you know, do what we gotta do. Yeah, my week's been okay. Uh, it's been quite busy because uh, <clears throat> some work things happened, some personal things happened. But yesterday was the Pride Festival here in uh, the area where I'm in, which is really exciting. Um, we went, Mary and I went to uh, the Bayfront Park thing for lots and lots of swag and donating to charities and also buying cool stuff and getting very sunburned. Are you sure very sunburned is something you want to be getting, bro? Because I remember you used to get blisters when you got sunburned, so hopefully uh, hopefully we you were, used enough sunscreen. We, we were only out there for like an hour, like two hours or whatever, out in the sun or whatever. I didn't get too bad. Okay. Just just so that way you don't wind up like the Toxic Avenger, that's all. I'd rather not do that again. And how's your week been, Steve? Yeah, eventful. I made us a website. Yes, you did. It's still in progress, but you did make a website. Um, I will eventually get uh, 
all that information onto a timed thing for the um, uh, stream on my like bots. Just throw it in the description for all of your videos. I mean, it's gonna go on. It's gonna go in the description for the videos. Yeah, I need to do more editings on that. I finally update. I updated all the videos with the new title, by the way, though. Yes, yeah, all that sweet. Awesome. And so, Mary, like, how how would you relate to our uh, um, near apocalypse uh, entertainment, gaming, and political news podcast? What, what's your whole opinion on the whole deal? Um, as far as, I guess, video games go, um, I don't know, I used to watch Jacksepticeye and Markiplier, and of course, Tim was a huge influencer of all of that, and partially enabler, or whatever word he prefers to use for that. Facilitator. Yeah, that. And, um, as far as politics go, uh, I am extremely liberal, and feminist, and activist, kind of, and all of that. So, there's that. So you'd fit in. You, you, you would not be in opposition of a lot of things that we're going to be saying, so that's good. Alright. My, my week, uh, I mean, as people who've been following things know... Um, last week I had surgery, so been recovering, um, uh, had a bad day on Wednesday, had to go to the ER, um, spent most of Wednesday in the ER, and I mean most because I think we went there around 7.30 and I didn't get out until like 2.33 in the afternoon. It was a long day, CT scans and everything, but everything's fine, it's just slow, my body being slow with healing and deciding to be riddled with pain at random times for no fucking reason. You know, that's the way it goes. But because of me being back uh, slowly but surely to streaming and stuff, um, and this being our fifth episode, um, if we get ten viewers, I'm going to give away uh, at least a month of Humble Bundle um, to one lucky viewer who said something in chat so if you want to discuss things you can uh, you know speak along in chat if you want no there's no problem with that we, we would like some interaction and tell um, your friends yes tell your friends tell your family we've got a website and stuff we're gonna get that stuff ready and uh, ready to go um but yeah tell your enemies <laughs> let, let's get <laughs> uh, tell your friends tell your enemies yes uh let's get into the uh first segment which is gaming news um First thing I would like to say is, on a semi-sad note, uh, DGDS, the charity uh, stream for retro gaming that I've been part of a couple times now, has decided to take the month of September off. Um, the applications closed yesterday, and then the organizer had a meeting and decided, yo, we're tired as fuck. We just did two streams plus an extra bonus, uh, you know, race plus races in our two streams last month we are tired as fuck we need a month off and so they're taking the month of september off they're going down to just one stream and possibly a race during said stream um so a whole weekend uh a month as opposed to two weekends and a third uh random stream and stuff so they're gonna go back to the basics um try and refine and re re refresh themselves which is good um, I'm, I mean, a little bit up, you know, sad about that because I was really looking forward to doing another round this month. But I was also like, what games am I going to be playing? You know, because we're at we're at this we're at this situation where it's like, uh, I played Castlevania three twice. I played Mega Man one, Mega Man two, Mario World, Mario three, Mario. It's like I'm running out of freaking games, man. I need to find some new jams to get good at. You know. And the month off will help me do that. So I mean, it's not, that's not something that you, you, you guys could really talk in on, but um, just kind of wanted to give that announcement because I'm part of the community and just wanted to give people an idea. I well, mean, they made the announcement and stuff like literally four hours ago. Well, that gives us like a month to actually work on our social media presence and website and stuff like that too. Yeah, True. we 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 wanna we wanna be be a form of represent representing for the Twitch gaming community. 
Um, so then that brings us to the, the big article um, that I have here uh, we'll do last. Um, but there was a uh, trailer that was dropped by the creators of Owl uh, Owlboy. Um, uh, yeah. They uh, basically pulled an April Fool's type joke. Uh, they uh, dropped a trailer for Chrono Break, the um, proposed third game in the Chrono, Chrono Trigger series that's been rumored for, damn, nearly 20 years now, because um, wasn't it like 99 or 2000 that uh, Chrono Cross came out for the PlayStation 1? Um, Holy crap. But it's, uh, it was fully done in-house by the Owlboy team. Um, it was those guys with, uh, you know, some, um, some of their, uh, some of their good, good art and good music and it kind of gave a bit of a flavor of the series. Um, there's a link in the, uh, um, show notes for, um, the other people in discord. If you wanted to watch that, I saw a little bit of it. It looks good. Um, but I'm just sad that it's not actually ever going to be a thing. So to be fair, if it was anything more than just a trailer with stills, they probably would have got a cease and desist from Square Enix. <laughs> just saying. You, you mean if they would have actually animated their own sprites? God. Yeah, I know. It's fucking terrible. Square's kind of dicks about that. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, I, I mean, other gaming news, I mean, I'm sorry it's kind of a lackluster week because I don't have money and I've been sick, but uh, two big titles were released this week, uh, Two Point Hospital and The Messenger. I've seen some play of both games. Both games look great. Uh, both are pretty independent games, um, as opposed to, you know, other things. So, you know. Uh, was the messenger like what kind of game was that? That that was the the shinobi ninja type one. It looked like it looks pretty cool. I watched my buddy Max Game Squad Squad play it a little bit the other day, and uh, it's pretty good. Um, apparently, Danimal Cannon worked on some of the music for the trailer at least. Um, not sure if he worked on music for the game or not. That's cool. But if he did work on music for the game, that's the second game that he's worked on this year because the other being just Shapes and Beats. Which was fucking amazing. Yeah. It's, uh, really, really appreciative of uh, Dan Wilkins' work. Dan Wilkins' good shit. Um, then, th I guess the only other thing is the Nindies drop. Oh, okay, wait. No, two things. Uh, Cyberpunk's 2077 showed off some gameplay footage this week. Um, did oh, either, absolutely. did any of you guys see any of that? It was like, I watched a little bit of that. Yeah, it was almost an hour. I watched like half an hour of it. It looks... It looks like you would expect a futuristic cyberpunk RPG game to look. Yeah, it looked, lo it looked a lot like... Um, since it's from a first-person perspective, I can't like not make the comparison to Fallout. Especially considering with the, the weapon combat and stuff. It looked like... Follow-up mix shadow run, yeah, like kind of like that. And I hadn't, I hadn't watched enough of it to get to any of like the dialogue or whatever. But I mean, I was trying not to get spoiled for it anyway because I'm super excited. <laughs> uh, there's still no release date on it, so don't get too excited, bro. <laughs> I know there's not. I'm, I've, I've been uh, patient about it. But I mean, it's news. Um, Next gen consoles and PC, I believe, are the proposed um, releases. Uh, so yeah, it's probably gonna be like not able to be run on my computer. Yeah. Speaking of running on computers, I just found out that they're uh, planning a release for the next uh, GeForce series. The twenty series is starting to be released on the twentieth. Oh yeah, I heard about that. They're all gone now. Yeah, they sold out, and they're apparently extremely expensive. Like, uh, the lowest price one starts at like seven hundred bucks. Yeah, and they they haven't even released a lot of benchmarks. It's mostly just marketing buzzwords. And yeah, still sold out right away. 
and it doesn't look like they've actually improved any of the uh, things that you know you can cross check with other things like it's still like 11 gigs VRAM as opposed to you know increasing the VRAM or stuff like that they increased the speed of the RAM the speed of the RAM doesn't I mean, it, the, the, the amount of RAM matters less than the speed these days because it, once you load everything into the RAM, it's faster and less. The speed of the RAM is faster. Yeah. But yeah, that, that was another little bit of, I guess, technology news. Jeez, imagine if we actually started doing science and technology section. Holy fuck. Um, but no, the big, big thing is the Nindies, uh, cause we all, we all watched that, uh, or at least part of that. Um, the Nindies showcase, uh, was on Wednesday, I believe. Um, no, it was Tuesday morning and it was, it was not really, uh, advertised that far in advance. It just kind of dropped out of nowhere. Um, Sort of like the Smash Brothers uh, announcement. You get like a couple days notice and then holy shit, it's here. So Nintendo's kind of killing it on the hype train right now. Uh, they, had a, they had a lot of games that were uh, advertised. Um, I'm going to quick uh, get um, a list up here. Um, Yeah, IGN. Because mm. we have Hyperlight Drifter, Special Edition, Tower Fall, Treasure Stack, Zarvat. Um, Zarvat is actually a game that is developed was so a solo project developed by um, a dude who uh, Snow Hydra who works on Avaria Versus, which is a game that I kickstarted and am part of their community. So a, a guy I know worked on a fucking game in the Nindies. I found that out the other day. It's like, holy shit, yay. Um, Mineko's Night Market, which is one that I've been kind of keeping an eye on for a while. Samurai Gun 2, Bullet Age, World Next Door, Level Head, King of the Hat, Untitled Goose Game, Into the Breach, which literally re released the day that it showed up and The Messenger, which is a multi-platform release, I believe. Uh, Bastion, Wasteland 2, Undertale's coming September 18th to the Switch, Little Fingers, Super Brothers, Sword and Sorcery, Jackbox, Party Pack 5, uh, Transistor, Desert Child, Dragon Mark for Death. There, there was a lot of like quick hits on a bunch of games coming out um, in the next six ish months that are all indie games which i love that nintendo has been working hard on the indie scene yeah about half of them were like games that had already been released on other platforms but that's good too because some people don't have like a pc or a ps4 or whatever some people are just like looking into and, and the fact that you can bring it wherever the hell you want to go it's all good Man, I'm trying to get my volume on my music a little bit better, but there we go. Um, can't do it less than two. Can't do it one. Sorry. But yeah, that's really great. Um, Steve uh, watched it with watched a little bit with me, um, and we were talking about it. What did you see and or like? I know that you don't have a Switch, but there's a lot of stuff in v that is there. Well, uh, there was that one that kind of reminded me a little of Harvest Moon and Animal Crossing. Yeah, the Minico's Night Market. We had a bit of a discussion over a Discord uh, chat for, with that one. Yeah, that one looked cool. That one's uh, one that I think they announced back when they did the uh, Splatoon 2 um, DLC reveal and the surprise Smash Brothers reveal back in March. Um. So it's one that I've like been following on Twitter for a while because um, I follow the developers for that game and there's really been nothing said until now. So that it's nice to hear that something's, you know, coming out. 
um, with that one. Uh, another highlight uh, is uh, World Next Door, which looks like a visual novel, but not like a dating sim. Um, so it's like a visual novel slash, uh, you know, sprite-ish game. And then <laughs> the Untitled Goose Game. Literally, that is the uh, title that they have for it. I don't know if that's going to be the f finished title or if that's just the um, title that they're going with because it makes the thing so much more hilarious. But <laughs> you play as a goose raising hell. Stealing hats, eating crops, pooping on yards, just goose on the loose. That's great. <laughs> And, and insert joke about wild goose chase here yeah and it, it 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 blew up twitter like it was the only thing that people were talking about for a good two hours after the nindies um and then i guess um let's see here any other into the breach was one of their uh oh but wait there's more moments that they keep doing it's like the end they end their stuff and they're like oh good we're, we're we're done with the showcase goodbye and then it's like but wait we have one more thing to show you it's like fuck you guys <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of their trope now um into the breach was something where they uh it was developed by the faster than light people it's uh turn-based uh rpg type thing and it was literally announced and dropped the same day so that was That's crazy. pretty fucking cool. Bastion is getting a Switch port. Undertale, obviously, everyone's excited about Undertale, but not as much as they probably were with the PlayStation um, release because of the uh, special edition with the heart locket and everything. Yeah. That's but true. it's it's sad that it's taken this long to get it. It should have been a launch title, to be honest. Because it was apparently in development for the Wii U um, indie marketplace for years. Yeah, they, they, there were rumors and then they were half confirmed and then they moved it to the Switch. <laughs> I know one indie game that um, hasn't uh, been announced yet that I'm going to be keeping an eye on is Tangle Deep. But... Um, the developer for that, Zircon of OPC Remix, is still working on the port himself, just like he worked on the game pretty much exclusively by himself. So, yeah, it's probably not going to come till next year, but we'll, we'll see. But that's the Nindies showcase. I mean, any other thoughts here? Ideas? Things to look forward to? I don't know. Jackbox Party Packs are always welcome in my book. <laughs> I oh yeah, I, I got five. all of those now. Yeah, like I I haven't even bought four yet, and they're announcing five for like next month. But... I know four just came out not that long ago, like less than a year ago, I think, or just about a year ago. And I haven't gotten it yet because of you know mi not having money the last time it was on sale. Right. Um, uh, but yeah, it's going to include you don't know Jack full stream split the room Mad vs City. Um, Patiently Stupid, and Zeeple Dome. So, and like all the other Jackbox Party Packs, it's basically, the, the game is uh, to be played with your phone. Um, you just kind of host it with the copy, and a bunch of people can join you. Great for streaming. Oh yeah, absolutely. So, let's... The ninnies. Um, small bit of an addendum to last week's uh, breaking news story with the shooting. Um, two two big things. Uh, EA has devoted to uh, has pledged a million dollars to charities revolving around the shooting. Um, oh shit! There's a bee in the house. Hooray! Bees in the house now. Please go back out the door, bee. Please. Thank you. I'm not allergic, but I do not want them trying to come near my face when I'm doing this. Um, but yeah, the, the EA is pledging some money towards this uh, cause. And then we have um, the news that the person who did the shooting was uh, one of the contestants in the uh, tournament. He brought a gun, um, and he apparently suffered from some violent uh, stuff. And... 
you know, um, you know, just a lot of stuff. And apparently he was uh, hospitalized for psychiatric reasons a couple of times. And pretty recently, too. So, I mean, it's like the guy was definitely going in basically with the plan that if he didn't do well, he was going to do something. And that's really sad. Very, very unfortunate circumstances. Yeah. But that's uh, gaming news for this week. Sounds to me like he needs to get good. <laughs> well, he, he's uh, dead, so that's not exactly going to happen, Steve. Also, bad joke because of uh, content, but, you know, I expect bad jokes from you, Steve. Because <laughs> I'm a terrible person. Well, we all are, but I try to keep it on the down low sometimes. Also, sorry it wasn't very interactive with you, Mary. You just kind of got dragged in at the last minute. You'll probably have more to say with the politics session with Steve. The guy sounds like a complete wanker. Yeah, he was. <laughs> All right. Um, so, entertainment news. Yeah. Well, um, there was a... Uh... Oh, geez, there's not a lot other than the stuff that I had pulled in. <laughs> All right. So, um, there was, uh, was this kind of a triple feature sort of this thing that we hadn't covered previously because it just happened. Um, uh, the late, great Aretha Franklin, um, had, uh, her funeral was, uh, over the weekend, I think. I think Friday. It was, yes, it was like Friday, I think, yeah. Yeah, Friday was, uh, Aretha Franklin's funeral. Rest in peace, Queen of Soul. Um, but there were some things that happened there. Like, apparently there was, uh, the bishop who was doing this had, uh, done some inappropriate touching. Um, uh, bishop, he had, uh, he had just apologized for touching Ari Ariana Grande's uh, bust because, uh, apparently he had, uh, Reached her arm around her, and his fingers had touched like part of her boob. Yeah, and I'm see, was, I'm looking at the picture okay. right now, and it looks like yeah, he got a he tried cop and feel, is yeah. what it looks like. Like he, it's not, it's one of those uh, high school. Uh, I'm just gonna reach around, just you know, to bring you in for a little bit of a side hug and like grab some side boob. Yeah, that's, that's not exactly cool. what it looks like. She looks absolutely terrified, and I feel so bad for her. Like, there's there's not even any excuse for that. No. Like, you didn't you didn't even need to touch her at all. There's just there's no excuse for it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And with the other things going on in the Catholic Church right now, I'm not surprised she has that look on her face. Oh yeah. <laughs> she has every right. To she has every right to be terrified. <laughs> But it was a very star-studded event. Um, you know, uh, Bill Clinton was there. Apparently, uh, his uh, talents uh, yeah, were Hillary utilized. Hillary Clinton was, and I forget, but a couple other pretty big names. Uh, Jennifer Hudson, who is going to be playing Aretha Franklin in a new bio biopic that's coming out sometime in the near future, uh, sang Amazing Grace and was just absolutely killed it. <laughs> well, Jennifer Hudson kills it literally any time she goes to the microphone. I mean, that's true, which is why they picked her to play Aretha Franklin. Yeah, still, it's it's going to be hard to try to, you know, imitate the original. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it, it, it could go one way or it could go another as far as, like, the way that it's portrayed. But if they if they focus more on the life than the singing, then it won't be so bad. Like, they, they did a lot of that with Walk the Line, Johnny Cash. Right, right back. And he had uh, passed. Um, but there is another bit of news that is, involves Ariana Grande that's not bad news and does not involve boob touching. Um, apparently, she got a rather large tattoo on her... Uh, the turn. Yeah, on her uh, forearm, 
of uh, Chihiro from Spirited Away, uh, the popular Hayao Miyazaki anime film. That's great. Yeah, there's pictures on Instagram. It looks really nice. Hasn't been colored yet, but it's, she posted a lot of it, like just all sorts of pictures of it. Instagram culture. It's just great though that she uh, is wearing her anime love literally on her sleeve. <laughs> I'm sorry, bad joke. Uh, okay, I missed the bad joke and everything because I was escorting B from my apartment. It was trying desperately to get out the small crack my wife left in the patio door, and so I had to open it all the way for it to realize, oh, there's a hole here. <laughs> no, I was just saying that Ariana Grande really wear, wearing her love for anime on her sleeve. That's not a bad joke. That's, you know... Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> I think that was pretty clever. Okay. I'll accept the compliment. Um, also, that's Kiki from Kiki's Delivery Service, right? Uh, no. Or uh, Chihiro. Uh, Chihiro oh, from oh, okay. Way. They, they, they look so similar. It's Miyazaki, and they're, they're young girls. Yeah, Miyazaki has a particular style. It's not unlike uh, Ak Akira... Um, Akira Toriyama, yeah, the Dragon okay. Ball Z guy, who's also think... worked on Dragon's uh, Dragon Quest, Dragon Warrior, and Chrono and Chrono Trigger. Trigger. Well, yeah, Chrono is like a half-ass Goku. We all know that. <laughs> oh man, it seems like every other day some more leaks are coming out about the new Broly movie. Uh, yes, but how much can we actually believe until it comes out? Some of it is translated official source material. I mean, yeah, maybe. It's just, but I'm going to believe it about as much as I believe all the leaks coming from the Star Wars Episode Nine uh, set and how, you know, apparently uh, Matt Smith is going to be in it now and Ray oh, and dude. Kylo have some sort of a weird love child. It's like, come on. Their fingers touched. You can't have, you can't have force babies just by fingers touching. <laughs> that does not work. <laughs> what are they trying to do? Do do another Anakin now? It's like, oh, the Force created the child from their bond. It's like, no Boy, sex. That no sex is happens. That can canon happen, since it did in the prequels, but... Yes, but why would you bring up the freaking prequels in the new series? Why would you do something I, so stupid? I don't know. It's like trying to say that you know, Jar Jar Binks is a great idea because if you put any scenes with him with the backing track of Gay Fish from Kanye and South Park, it just, just becomes hilarious. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm with you on that. With, uh, oh, shit. I mean, considering that right before the last episode came out, they basically just kind of rewrote everything, it's pretty hard to believe any links about the newest one. Right. Also, they could um, fire a director and just hope, put a whole new person in charge to rewrite everything. That's not what they're doing with uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Yeah, yeah, geez. We talked about that last week. Um, anyway, was it the... Oh, yeah, I was going to mention, um, Last Jedi is on Netflix. For anyone who hasn't seen it, including myself. Yeah, I watched it on Netflix. Wait, you haven't seen it? Nope. Not at all. <laughs> Swear to God, I keep getting interrupted. <laughs> My mother just calls. <laughs> wow. Damn. I'm just like, Mom, I'm on, I'm, we're doing a podcast right now. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, Ariana Grande anime fan um i mean uh did you talk about the fact that eminem released an album and a diss, diss track this week uh no we hadn't yet well okay. kind of okay. we'll get with it but that was before we were officially officially live oh okay yeah um the uh, unofficial pre-show talk because i was still trying to get things to work yeah um I was just looking, and apparently that 
not in the sh show. But, well, it's stuff yeah, that we've it's, seen it's, it's, on our own. It's like, well, why would we need to put it in the show notes if we've already seen it? And... Right. It, it happened. He he dissed Tyler Vader and referenced him name with the F slur. We will not repeat that because of a company that's here and B because of respect for people of all sexualities here on this podcast. Yeah. So is that that's that, one that's, that, that 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 like the N word is one that I do not use ever. Yeah, it's Just, not. I, I will I will I will freely call someone a cunt, an asshole, a dick licker, or you know some other fucking slur or word. But though those are off limits for me. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm not gonna be another PewDiePie here. Nope. But yeah, it happened. And Steve brought some news to us that can segue if there's nothing else. Oh, wait, um, were you going to talk about the we're Paradise we're PD about... or Guardian Spice? Yeah, I thought we those should... were both good topics. We should probably talk about Paradise PD first because there's not much to... Yeah, like, that... I, I haven't seen a lot of it. Like, just I, the trailer. I've seen the first like... three. Wait, it's out already? Yeah, it came out on the 31st. That's why I brought it up. Oh. And you already watched three episodes? Steve has dude, no life. Dude, that was like, you know, like three days ago. I guess I've been busy. Also, thank you, Chris Chris Brand 79 for the follow. I did not should... uh, actually get the uh, alert because I do not have my uh, alerts thing on. You guys should be more surprised that I hadn't watched the entire thing. I, I guess that's fair. That probably also tells us all we need to know about the quality of said show if you haven't binged it yet. The first two are terrible. When I saw the trailer, I thought it looked the comedy looked like a cross between Family Guy and Brickleberry. And, yeah, I think that was a pretty accurate assessment. The third episode is pretty damn funny. But it's probably a little bit more of the recent family guy where it's really dipped in quality as opposed to you know yeah pre and immediately post renewal cancellation renewal uh family guy when it was kind of you know <clears throat> actually good at times it, it, the third episode though i it was great the one black cop on the force accidentally shoots himself and so you have both black lives matter and blue lives matter uh, arguing over each other because that, he shot himself, so technically a black sh cop shot a black man. Oh, I don't know how I feel God. about that. That is... Uh, the best part was they had little uh, joke segments of uh, CNN and Fox News. I mean, I understand why they would try to make that but... <laughs> I do too, but it's like... It's one of those, I laugh and then I cringe and then I cringe harder because it's like, uh, that is just, my, that my is the state of my, our world my, right now. My my yeah. favorite line, though, has to be on that fake CNN thing. How can we connect this to Russia? <laughs> I, I well, guess that makes it a Okay. <laughs> oh, they'd find a way. They would find a way. It could be super ridiculous. They'd make it as ridiculous as possible. They would find a way. I, I have to get it as a sound clip. Uh, we we I need to put that as an SFX then, just for yeah, just, just for Steve. Just like most of it's pretty bad and a lot of really juvenile dumb humor, but it has a couple of funny jokes. So. It's literally, not literally as fine, as fine, Big fine. Mouth? Yeah. Oh God, I couldn't even finish one episode of Big Mouth. Me and my I, wife I, were I like, "Hey, this is a thing it, like but... F is for family. That's uh, that's a cartoon on a cartoon for adults on Netflix. Let's let's watch this." And then we got like halfway through an episode. It's like this is way too out there for even us. And we, I, I couldn't finish F is yeah. for family. Mostly my wife just found it boring, so she complained a lot while I was watching it. Oh, F is for Family is pretty good. It's kind of like a Malcolm in the Middle-ish, but cartoons. <clears throat> so yeah, I can see why your wife would be bored, because your wife is bored by everything. 
that isn't like hyperactive at times. She absolutely hates Paradise PD, though. Yeah. Well, Paradise I PD. might as well, even if I watched it. I did finish Disenchanted, though. I think on Monday. Oh yeah, it gets way better on episode eight to ten. God, episode eight to ten like made me realize that. Um, if you haven't watched Disenchantment yet, watch it. Um, literally the best thing Mike, Matt Groening has done since Futurama. It's um, the only thing. The only thing. <laughs> yes, but it, it, he still sort of works with, on The Simpsons and it has his name attached. So that's why I'm saying. But it, it's, it's better than The Simpsons overall. Um, def, definitely need season two plus to determine where it lies in competition with Futurama, but it's very much like a fantasy Futurama. It's It's got a core cast that it deals with, and there is character development. That's, Even that's though the character right development alley. the character development is a lot more um, refined and condensed, as in um, a lot of Futurama's uh, character development happens over specific episodes over the entire length of the series whereas this is basically taking those specific episodes making them a series and putting it in a different setting right but yeah Disenchantment finished it it's good so Paradise PD has definitely got a down vote um I know there's been some controversy with the High Guardian Spice um, trailer. It, it oh, was, yeah. It was barely a trailer. It was more like... An announcement? An announcement slash reveal, which I guess yeah. I understand why they would do that, because this is like the first time that Crunchyroll has done an original animation. But, the but I think thing... they kind of did a little bit of a misstep. Yeah, the big thing everyone's lambasting about it is that trailer doesn't explain anything about the series or the characters. And so, in, instead of explaining anything about the world, they talk about how diverse their cast is. That is... It's like, okay, that it's good that you have a diverse cast, but the yeah. fact that that's all you have to say about it doesn't it bode well for the show a itself. Lot of, it brings up a lot of questions. It's like, yes, you have a diverse cast. That is great news, but what about the show? Diverse casts are becoming more and more of a thing just because of, you know, the fact that we're finally getting, you know, voice actors from all races, creeds, etc., Finally, so yeah, it, it's um, not exactly something that makes it special, and they didn't say anything else. Yeah, yeah, I think I think they just want as far as like, and you keep cutting out, know, maybe. Oh, right. Um, I think it might have just been that Crunchyroll wants to talk it up because this is the first time they've made a show. But considering that their our audience is mostly anime fans western studio i think that might have been a little bit uh weird but uh, on on the opposite side of it their parent company owns vrv which hosts a lot of independent animation stuff which i think would have been better platform for this show in particular and i yeah. agree with you also uh Diston, have you seen gary and his demons I've seen, like, most of an episode because it was shared with me uh, via certain sources. I want to watch it, but I don't want to have to pay a shit ton of money to watch it. Because I do I not have a Crunchyroll a... It's uh, subscription or Verve or whatever fucking subscription. And I've got enough subscriptions, thank you. I do not need I, more. I think I'm caught up, but I freaking love it. It's definitely up my alley. And yeah. you should watch it. Uh, Verve is actually like, it only has a couple of shows behind a paywall. I don't think that's one of them. I, Wait, what? It, I think it is. Is it? Wait, Pretty did you sure. Pay, did you pay for uh, Verve? Dude, do, do, do I pay for anything? Then, Steve, then it's Steve goes to the magic the internet. You... Oh, wait. He goes to the magic okay. internet tree. <laughs> 
Just like he oh, did with right. DuckTales. Oh yeah, that's right. Which was still awesome. Season two's in like a month or two. DuckTales is like hands down my current favorite show. Duck, DuckTales, like if I could have gotten my wife into DuckTales as much as she got into um, Gravity Falls, we probably would have watched the entire thing twice by now. Oh, yeah, yeah. E- even my wife likes it, and so does my daughter. It's a family-friendly, family entertainment cartoon. Who would have thought? And and hilariously, I, out of all of us, I'm like the biggest fan of it. My just daughter's like how you were the kinda... biggest fan of My Little Pony. <laughs> I mean, neither confirm nor deny your suspicions. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that show had some pretty good stuff in the first two seasons. Season three on, I haven't caught much, but what I have caught is definitely reduced in quality. Probably because it the creator left the show. And then... oh, unfortunate. The creator left the show. That's usually what happens. There's only a couple of episodes I really just don't like. Most of them are pretty solid. I do need to catch up with Steven Universe, though. Just to think I... Because I have Hulu, so I have to wait for them to just dump a whole fucking season at once. Yeah, I tried to watch it, but I think when I watched it on Hulu, I think they had them all in the wrong order, so... Yeah, I I think they did when I first... Yeah, when I first watched it, I think they... It wasn't that they had the episodes in the wrong order... It's that they had they had done some weird thing with their algorithm for uh, play next, where um, they were doing stupid shit. Where like it would play an episode of Steven Universe, and then it would skip to an episode of another show from Cartoon Network, like Adventure Time or something, a regular show, and then I'd have to skip that to get to the next ep- the next episode of Steven Universe. But it wasn't the next episode; it was like two episodes later. Even though the first season was a lot of bottle episodes, like, where it's, like, more just situational, and it doesn't really get story-heavy until the end of season one, um, like, it still was confusing as fuck, so I had to rewatch it. Yeah. It, they, they, did, they did a smart move doing that part, because I'm sure that if they had gotten in very heavy earlier in the season, it might have been cancelled. Well, so we all know what happens with... with Cartoon Network and story-driven series, right? Yeah. Adult Swim is where those are. Yeah, and well, this this is one that was marketed toward young, a younger audience. And they wouldn't have hit their target market if they had put it on Adult Swim. Yeah. Oh, speaking of Adult Swim, Ven- Venture Bros is still freaking awesome. You've been telling me. Not too into that one. What? How? I like the concept. It's just that I'm. I just haven't like. I don't know. First two seasons were really, really good, and then season three was kind of meh for me, and I fell off because there's like two years between fucking seasons. That that's yeah. that's why you just gonna binge it. I know. I'm getting. I'll get there. Once they're finally done and they make like a box you know, set, a box set, it's gonna be a lot better. But that's the whole problem. It doesn't have nearly as much, many fans as it deserves. That's true. Yeah, if it wasn't for the amount of fans that Rick and Morty has and how big it can't, it took off, they would have been in the same boat as uh, Venture Brothers, where it's always two years between seasons and it's like just had kind of barely below the radar. They have Pickle Rick socks at fucking Hot Topic. Oh, okay. So (laughs) I'm going to go with a crazy fan theory here. I'm not going to say it's spoilers because it's a fan theory. But I think that the Monarch is Doc Ventures' half-brother. You know, I've been wondering about that myself. Because there's some very sim redheads with that same kind of facial hair. They're both really skinny. And Doc Venture's dad was a bit of a man whore. Oh, you saw that bit. 
No, I inferred that bit because Doc Venture is a man whore, Monarch is a man whore, and um, basically all sci- super scientists are man whores in that show. Well, damn. Well, I will spoil it a little bit then. In one of the previous seasons, uh, they find, well, the Monarch uh, finds out his dad was a vigilante called the Blue Morpho, and he also finds a porno tape with his dad and, you know, Dr. Venture's dad. Oh, so that God. really makes me think that's going to be a big reveal probably this season. That would probably also explain why they hate each other so much because Doc Venture hates his other brother as well. Jonas well, Venture Jr. Well, probably, but I don't think either character actually knows about it. The the monarch well, knows about the porno tape now, but as a kid, didn't. Damn. I have no idea why he hates Dr. Venture so much. That's never been revealed. He just does. Now the bee is bothering my wife. Damn. She's on the on, on our lovely balcony and being bothered by bees. Because apparently she smells like a flower. <laughs> I don't like balconies. Me either. I'm deathly afraid of heights. Me too. So, now that we've gone on that tangent, was there anything else in entertainment news we were going to talk about? Yes. Oh, uh, yeah, the, that other thing. The other thing before we segue into the thing that no one likes us to, us to talk about. Yeah, Weird Al is once again the best person. Okay. I'm going to start loading your articles but yes he got a star on the walk of fame this week which is fucking about time and he has the best comment ever for one he starts off with please don't pickaxe my star (laughs) then he then he goes on uh, unless of course i do something monstrous or evil then go ahead I think that has to be the best diss I have ever heard. Oh my god. That's actually that's actually great and that is I epic. Love it because he is just so savage in the best way. Oh I love savage. how one of these is a Fox it's News article. I know, Wholesome right? and savage. <laughs> You know it's bad for the president when Fox News criticizes him. Or talks about it. Are you starting to see some of these articles that Steve linked in his special politics area? Uh, yeah. Um, There's a lot. Crap. I guess I'll start out light. Did you but guys yes, see the um, balloon? One, one, one second. Uh, remember what we do. Um... This, as, as, as before we segue into the politics section, um, first and foremost, we are all very left-leaning on this show. We do not apologize for this. Uh, if you do not agree with our political views, you have your opinion. You know, you're entitled to it. If you don't want anything to do with po- politics and you enjoyed our uh, gaming news and entertainment segment, no worries. You can turn it off now. Come back next episode when we have more of those things. But we're about to get into some political territory here. So for those who are leaving, thank you for watching. And I'll, we'll see you next time. And for those who are sticking with us, let's get back behind the uh, political wall here. But yes, the bikini, bikini balloon, the Fox News article. Yeah, bikini oh Trump balloon. <laughs> That that reaction is all 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 we need. <laughs> that is so fucking great. And of course, since that one's on Fox News, the article is talking about how the mayor of London thinks it's disgraceful because the U.S. is one of our best allies. Yada yada. But these are, I believe, the same people who did the Trump baby balloon. Yep. That's great. Oh my god. That's so great. Wow. Roast him, roast him good. Oh, that is that is some that is some 
I love the balloon the balloon fights. This is this is some good shit. I should also That's mention some creative that stuff. None of us have won the dead pool this week. <laughs> oh shit. Okay, we should definitely uh, get back into the Deadpool then. That should probably be the next order of business. Okay. Um, who got fired this week? Um, wasn't it McGann that got fired? Yeah, McGann got fired over Twitter. Uh, he got fired over, over Twitter, Twitter, of all things. Um, over Twitter? <laughs> so Trump fires one of his guys over Twitter. And um, a, a new thing that we implemented last week was we have this Deadpool now. Um, basically... Uh, seeing who the hell Trump is going to fire or, you know, whatever, get indicted this week. Um, this also includes his family if they're arrested or... Yeah, exactly. Anyone Mueller takes down. And um, I believe I had uh, his uh, press secretary chick, uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders. You had Sessions, Steve, and... Frosty Bro, you had uh, Devos, right? Yeah. I'm None gonna of them are fired with... this week. So, at this point, we're allowed to repick if we want, but I am going to stick with Sessions. Um, actually, I am going to join Steve on the Sessions. Um, after the events of this week, I am going to uh, put a double or nothing onto Jeff Sessions that he will be fired or indicted or flip by the end of the week. That sounds that sounds like a safe bet. I'm I'm probably moving that direction too, just because of all the news that's happened. Yeah, it's right before the midterm, so so we've got three. We have we had last week. We had one vote for Sessions, one for Huckabee, and one for uh, Betsy Devos, and now we have three. Can three all three of us are on Sessions for next week? Um, Mary, did you did you have anything to uh, put uh, add? Even though you're a guest, um, a, an honorary vote in the Deadpool. Um, who would you pick to be getting fired or otherwise out of Trump's uh, immediate circle in the next week? Because that seems to just happen. Somebody gets fired or something every fucking week. I don't know, but I would just like to comment that it's sad that you have to have this on here. And it's not like sad that it's here. It's sad that the stuff is happening so much that it is even able to be here. So our country is a shithole. It's just great. <laughs> this is why we do this. That's this why is the our way of screaming is the void. apocalypse. This is why we scream at the void with ASMR. Ah! 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 <laughs> Did you see the, uh, the comment about that I put on the website? <laughs> yes. Yes, you did. Hey, Akutsu. Yes, did. Hey, Akutsu appears. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Screaming into the void, Akutsu appears. Um, Kutsu, <laughs> we just talked about the Deadpool. Who from Trump's circle do you think is going to get uh, fired by next week? I know you're Dutch, and I know you don't necessarily follow U.S. politics as well as we do, but if you had anyone to pick, <laughs> who would get fired by next week? I am honestly curious what the Dutch think about our country. <laughs> I am, too. Uh, I'm afraid. If we can arrange it one of these weeks, we've got to get you on, Kutsu. Just because you're great to have around. <laughs> Can I pick our own prime minister? <laughs> That's wishful thinking. I, yes. I don't think Trump can fire them, but it might count for partial points if he decides to resign on Twitter. Ow. Well, if he oh. says something on Twitter about your your prime minister, we will we will count a partial point. Uh. You know, he start beef. Uh yeah, he does. He starts beef with fucking everybody. All right, so that's the Deadpool. Do I uh, have... I want to make sure I have this article, but that would be a good segue into his whole new NAFTA agreement and leaving out Canada. Okay. Where the fuck is it? Oh, here oh, it is. There we go. It's the small article. Yeah, the hill. The hill. Yeah, I put the little foamy emote there to make sure I realized that was an article and not just part of a link. So, yeah, Trump left out Canada, 
in his new NAFTA renegotiation deal, which obviously pissed off Canada. So Trump Blame responds Canada. by saying, we shouldn't have to buy our friends. Oh, uh, that's, that's what that was about. about. Oh, boo, boo fucking, fucking who? Get, get over, over yourself. yourself. Like, like we're, we're, starting, starting, we're starting, like, like freaking... We're starting crap with crap Canada, Canada, Canada now? Like, like Canada, 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 the nicest people, people of all, and, all, and like, our, our greatest allies that we possibly could have. And, like, like Justin, Justin Trudeau is reason enough to not do that because great fucking person, person good leader. leader. Canada, Canada, all things. That, that too. <laughs> he has a very nice butt. Um, <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm, I, I am... I like, am definitely on the Trudeau could totally uh, be uh, able to annex Minnesota and we will all be better off. Well, and Northern Wisconsin, I guess, too, I guess. Our uh, starting beef with Canada is not a recent thing. Trump has been raging against Trudeau for like the past year. Uh, and yes, I know we have an Echo Kutsu. She's in the same room as one of the hosts. We're trying to figure it out. This is a demo thing. Maybe next week they will have to share a mic if she comes back. Or next time she comes back. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to say this now. Trump saying we shouldn't have to buy our friends is probably the most hypocritical thing I've ever heard anyone say on Twitter ever of all time. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Especially since his cabinet is basically all people he bought. Uh, he wouldn't and, have friends if he didn't have money. And, yeah, and this brings me to the thing that I brought up last week about uh, our uh, relative whom he bought, whom was his friend. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mobster Labuti. We, 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 oh, God. We, we do not love you, but you were our uh, distant cousin or uncle or something. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <clears throat> If Trump be didn't care- buy those be- WrestleMania tickets, he wouldn't have given two fucks about the guy. Be careful. We don't want Mueller to come for you next. We have, I'd we have flip on Trump in a minute. Sort of con- well, that's not what I'm worried about. What? Just all of a sudden, you know, a bunch of CIA and FBI guys just burst into your house for 30-year-old information on a mobster. <laughs> That I've never met in my life because my my immediate family moved from that area of the country for that reason to get out of the mob. Oh yeah, you, you basically gotta like move halfway across the country and change your name to get out of the mob because I totally reasons. forgot about that. Like until uh, I was looking, I was filing some things and I found my uh, birth certificate. I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. So, like I said before, you might as well have moved to Saskatchewan. Exactly. I am so confused. It's okay. It's okay. We have a really fucked up family tree on my dad's side. Oh. So, I guess our next article. Mueller gets another cooperator. Uh, Sam Patton, an associate of Paul Manafort in Cambridge Analytica, struck a plea deal. Okay, so... This this is a very big thing because it's the Cambridge Analytica people who were working for Russia and Trump to flip Facebook in Trump's favor prior to the election and get information on people and their politicals and votings and shit. Yep, and he has a connection to both Trump and Cambridge Analytica. Oh my god. And he flipping. Well... And, and last last week they got the Trump family finance guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which means that Mueller probably has those least, tax returns that he and, refused. Yeah. And, and some sort of semblance of an idea of where the money's being laundered. You know, as you do. Uh, it speaks volumes, doesn't it? <laughs> our so, government is like more than ever packed with crooks. It's like everyone on the frick on the freaking cabinet and everyone who's related and all of them are like just as crooked as freaking uh, uh, 
the fucking Nixon. Oh. I am not a crook. <laughs> <laughs> not like and that. Trump's whole yeah, uh, cabinet might as well be wearing those black and white striped shirts and a little domino <laughs> mask with a bag with cash on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean the 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 the, the criminals from the Mop- Monopoly game? Yeah, they're oh. basically they're basically all the Hamburglers, except for instead of burgling Hamburglers, it's all of the government's money. money. Rather than be stealing hamburgers, right? Yeah, I know, right? At least so it's a tasty it, it, crime. It seems like Sam Patton. That what they got him on is that he didn't uh, register himself as a foreign agent. Mm. Well. That that carries some serious time and fines, yeah? Yep, and so for a plea deal, since that's not as big as some of the other shit people are doing, <clears throat> he seems to just be like, well, fuck it, I'm flipping. I, I, I've been noticing that a lot of the people who've been flipping on Trump are just doing it to get lesser sentences. It's almost like they know that they that they're guilty of some sort of crime. Well, given that it seems like every week now a new one's caught, that kind of builds up a case. So they Wait, know they're screwed. There, there's a case now. Uh, this is the first I've ever heard of a case, Steve. Where have I been? Have I been burying my head in the sand and watching Fox News? Clearly. (laughs) So the only thing you know about is that blimp. I know, right? And how much Trump is winning. My God. The sarcasm is hard. (laughs) It's all you get out of me. (laughs) Fucking sarcasm. Sarcasm and swearing. The SS Dizdon is here for fucking launch. <laughs> Speaking of okay. SS, um, Steve, Space Force, any news? Haven't heard any. <laughs> Space oh, Force. Two weeks, no news. They, they, they we were drop so a bomb. innocent two weeks ago. <laughs> they drop a bomb like Space Force. Give it a two-year deadline. No news. All, all, of, Trump's, all of Trump's people are flipping on him. No news about Space Force, the one thing that might actually maybe be a half-decent, half-brained idea, if done right. (laughs) And I said done right, not done the way Trump wants to do it. Yeah. So, my next article. uh, President Trump is shafting federal workers. Uh, Steve O'Bortz. I mean, Steve-O from Friday Night Fan Fiction. Sorry, I will maybe bleep that out. Uh, This one's for you, bud. Just he's fucking steaming about this. Stupid oh, CNN. And, and CNN ups. used the word shaft. In yep. Headline. I shaft. literally read the headline. So yes. So Trump <laughs> decided not to give federal workers a two point one percent raise this year. Fucking shithead. But then. There's been some update on this that uh, he got so much shit for this that he decided he probably still will. But the big thing in this story is that he basically was saying, no, we don't have enough money to give them these raises. Oh, I fucking wonder why. Yeah, you know, considering that he cut all taxes for the rich. You know, his buddies. Uh, again, he doesn't buy his friends. He, he, he said it so many times. He, we don't buy our friends. So, like all Canada. in all, this has way more to do with being, you know, a chance for him to try to come for Social Security and Medicare than it is about the raises. Oh, of course. It gives a pretense to come for those things that he said he wouldn't touch. Because, oh, we don't have enough money to pay our federal workers. You know, after he's current, constantly said that he was going to shut down the government if we didn't give it to this fucking one billion plus dollar wall. Oh, God. It says right here in the article that those tax cuts were $1.5 trillion. Yes, $1.5 trillion. Apparently, like, about 
half of that was from New York. And that's all deficit now. That's all in the deficit. Remember he was talking so much about how much deficit Obama put on us? And then Republicans all decided they didn't care about the deficit. And then when we get a Democrat in next, they'll be complaining about the deficit. Yep. That Trump caused and the Democrat is trying to fix. Yep. What and is remember exactly with Obama. He was fixing the deficit under Bush. And fixing the bullshit that Bush did that caused the 2008 banking crisis. I, I mean, Clinton started it with, you know, repealing Glass-Steagall or whatever, but, or Dodd-Frank or whatever. But that's neither here nor there. Yep. So, we yeah, haven't had a good is, president since fucking Carter, and it sucks. <laughs> yeah, this is all just a pretense so he can try to quietly come for everyone's social security. Kutsu says, lining your own pockets is expensive. The forgotten people understand this. <laughs> yes, Kutsu. The fuck? Oh my god. Again, you're in the Discord. You need, to, you need to talk to us about what times you'd be available on a Sunday to possibly be on. We're going to be trying to do this every week now. Try and... Ooh, yay! One of the articles that you linked to talks about our Deadpool. The Je yep, Jeff Sessions. That's the one I was going for next. This is another one that's been uh, addended multiple times. You know, because this, this article says Trump firing Sessions looks more likely than ever, but then, like two hours after that, Trump tweeted that he's not going to fire Sessions until after the midterms. So it's kind of up in the air when he'll fire Sessions, but it's coming. It's nice that he admitted, oh, I'm going to fire him after the midterms. So if we just keep saying Jeff Sessions in the Deadpool, eventually we're going to get a fucking win. Exactly. It's an easy win, but the thing is, is depending upon where the investigation with Mueller goes, this might cause an outright constant constitutional crisis because firing Sessions means that he will try to fire Mueller next or put in someone who will fire Mueller which is you know impeding an investigation all those lovely things uh, obstruction of justice I mean <sighs> it's already happening except getting caught or doing it in fucking broad daylight instead of undercover of uh, his tower Oh, dude, looking at the sidebar on one of these things, it looks like they made miniature versions of the Trump baby balloon to sell to people. Oh my god, that's great. There's <laughs> like a bunch of people that just have a ton of these things. Wow. I want one. Could, could we get some for our imaginary office? <laughs> yeah, they have a lot of, um, like, certain, uh, like, makeup products that say fuck Trump on them, like lipsticks and stuff. Oh, I remember I those proceeds go to like women's charities i kind of hope they're doing something like that for those balloons because that would be really good oh yes well, let's see that jeff sessions thing segues pretty nicely into this next one a poll trump disapproval rating up to 60 percent i wonder why <laughs> people are like unilaterally like now supporting sessions over trump wow <clears throat> wait sessions over trump that is that is different yeah i know what 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 the flying fuck i think is it was on? like 60 or 70 percent of people that said that they would rather you know that Firing Jeff Sessions is a terrible, terrible idea, and Trump's in the wrong. Yeah, and this is the same Jeff Sessions. The immigration. Yeah, he's the most racist Keebler elf I've ever seen. He is a very racist Keebler elf, indeed. So, yeah, that, that says something. Also, remember how 
Mueller's approval was complete crap a couple weeks ago, it, it's it, it spiked up, to like I think like sixty percent uh, approval. I mean, you know, when you start actually arresting motherfuckers and getting shit done, of course. Yeah, he went from, like, radio silence to getting three people in two weeks. Well, that's kind of how uh, exposés and work. Well, that's how it's supposed to work, but the average person on the street doesn't really get that. Well, yeah. they want results, and they want this now, just like they want their new big screen fucking TV now, and they want their, well, you know... Well, to be fair, we all want Trump indicted now. I mean, all, all of us here, maybe, um, there's still a decent amount of people who either don't know enough or are blinded by something, probably brain damage, who want him in office forever. He's some of which I'm... At some point. This, this can't, this absolutely can't last until the next election. There's just no way. I'm trying... I'm, Trying, trying to have some, some sort of hope that something's, something's got to give. Yeah, my, if my he stays speculation. For four years, it's going to be very bad for the country, especially with his, you know, tariffs on everybody and trade wars, and it will eventually tank the fucking economy, especially with the stupid tax cuts. And he wants to do more. Oh that yeah, that was a, that was either. a different article I read when Trump tweeted that saying that if he's impeached, the economy is going to collapse. And then I saw an art- articles on Forbes and the Wall Street Journal with actual, you know, financial experts that actually pointed out facts to the contrary, that the economy would actually go up if Trump got impeached. He's also said that a lot of liberals would riot in the streets and cause violence and try to take down the government. I'd be too busy partying. Right? Right? I, yeah, I'd, sure, I would I'd go. be at home drunk off my ass. Yes, I would. <laughs> That'd be so probably, be, probably be streaming some retro games and drunk off my ass. Yes. That, that, that is a very good plan. Yeah. You know, stay, stay in and drink. Don't get go out and drink and be violent. Yes, agreed to that. The people who would be violent are, you know, Trump supporters who would be crying into their beer with their giant big black trucks and small penises and guns and gun racks in the back being like i'm pissed off so i'm gonna go shoot some liberals yep because he's only when... he's only told people to do that how many times now <sighs> yeah because when they came when he came to duluth apparently like after the rally thing or whatever it was um is it Amsoil Arena, I think, or something like that? One of the bathroom stalls, the door was just, like, taken off, like, right, right after, after the event had happened. So, that's a thing. Oh, God. Yeah, there was, a lot of, there was a lot of vandalism and shit after the Trump um, rally here in Fargo. And he's coming back in a couple of days on the 7th because he's trying to get Kevin Kramer back reelected to the Senate for North Dakota, even though he was a terrible senator and incredibly corrupt. He took hundreds of thousands of dollars from oil industries to get the fucking Dakota Access Pipeline started. Well, the good news is with his approval being this low... It's Maybe it'll fucking work off- against him? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. But it's also Fargo, so... Red state, red state, red state. The fact they have any Democrats elected to anything is a surprise to me. I don't know, maybe even the Republicans are getting sick of this shit. That's well, kind some of, of them are. Some of them are. I mean, McCain was so sick of his shit he banned him from his fucking funeral. Yep, that happened this week. Mm-hmm. And Hillary Clinton, uh, when talking about him, was saying that they used to do shots together. Not surprised. I thought that was kind of interesting, as you know, partisanship and whatnot. Well, it harkens back to the time before it was this bad. Yeah. Back when, even though they would disagree with each other on the 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 Senate floor, they would actually go to the bar together and have drinks. Yeah, I don't think it's been this divided since the Civil War. 
Probably not, and it's very fucking terrible. But now, moving on to one of my favorite articles I found. Which one is that? GoFundMe raises thousands to place billboard of Trump's anti-Cruz tweet in Texas. Okay, so... Um... This is this is apparently led by one of the uh, Parkland survivors, but the tweet in question, uh, I love this. This is good. This should theoretically work well, even in Texas. the The tweet is, "Why would the people of Texas support Ted Cruz when he has accomplished absolutely nothing for them?" <laughs> He is another all talk, no action politician. Ah, uh, and that's from 2016 when they were running against each other for the presidential nomination. Gen Sears doing things to help the world. Oh, that makes me so happy. Good for them. Hooray! It was, it was the gun control advocate David Hogg. That was the um. Uh, yep, that's that's the one. Yeah. Gen Z is doing something to help the world. That's so great. Go and, them. Go you. Hang on. You you mentioned David Hogg, so I must uh, put a um thing on the. Uh... Hang on. I did it. I typed it wrong. Wait, was was I not supposed to do that? that? Oh. oh, like a putting chemicals there in the water that turn the fine. friggin' frogs gay. Uh, we we uh, never know what the hell he's doing. I, I I did the frogs gay thing because remember, Alex Jones is like has such a hard on for riffing, riffing against David Hogg, saying oh, yeah. he's a crisis actor and everything. Oh yeah, the crisis actor. That's a lot of bullshit. So I just had to use one of my sound effects. I'm sorry. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, we uh, talked about Alex Jones last week. Yeah, and his uh, apparent love for transgender porn. Yep. That's terrible. Mary almost spit out her... <laughs> I almost choked is what I did. did. <laughs> yep, a guy who hates transgendered people has apparently jacked it to trans- transgendered people. Which isn't actually that uncommon of a theme, because a lot of people who are opposed to gay marriage also jack off to lesbian porn. So, yeah, they clearly don't have a problem with it. They just, they like the sexualness of it all, but they don't want people to have rights. They just see them as, you know, objects. Not human. Well, how many Republican politicians have gotten taken down now because they were extremely anti-gay and then came out that they were having an affair with another man? Oh, you mean that, like that, like that one dude who was caught in the um, bathroom of the St. Paul Airport in the mid two thousands, and had to resign. Or shortly any of before them the two thousand eight election, in the woods somewhere. I, I, I'm pretty sure Ted Ted Cruz has uh, watched some man on man porn at one at least once in his life. Yeah, <laughs> not sure, but it seems like it seems he's straight, considering you know. That he accidentally tweeted porn. <laughs> that was a while ago. That was a couple years back, too, yeah. Oh, yeah. He was uh, tweeting a screenshot of something he was uh, doing, like his, uh, I think his website for when he was and he, running and for he president. Had, and he and had, had Pornhub in uh, one of the yeah, tabs. Yeah, he had a tab Pornhub up. <laughs> it was fucking oh, hilarious. God. <laughs> that reminds me of the time when Kanye was. Tweeting something about what election and you're cutting out again, bro. He was uh, tweeting about some uh, something about his music production, and he had like a link to like pirate site for FL Studio <laughs> in one of his tabs. <laughs> so you think he would have learned to check his tabs, but nope, nope, no one checks their tabs. It, but. I mean, Kanye's got a f- lifetime subscription to Pornhub now. That's funny. We reported on that a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> it's coming full circle. It's full fucking circle. All right, what's the next one you want to talk about, okay, Steve? Th- this is Kavanaugh I think, or Clinton. The Kavanaugh one, I think, is the biggest story. 
Well, yeah, I mean, the guy's supposed to be, uh, you know, going up for vote to possibly be on the Supreme Court. And yep. withholding documents about the guy is kind of, you know, not cool. You know? Yep. Trump administration withholds 100,000 pages of Kavanaugh's records. If you've ever seen 100,000 pages um, in, like, IRL, it pretty much fills up about, like, half of a truck bed. Yeah, it's... Uh... It's a lot of pages. It's uh, a lot of a lot of. Uh, if you're if you're wondering how much, with the average length of uh, Game of Thrones book being a thousand pages, um, there's f- so far what four or five books released. So that would be like fifty times as long as the Game of Thrones book series. Yep. So fifty take take fifty copies of the or fifty box sets of Game of Thrones. That'd only be fifty thousand, wouldn't it? Uh, they'd be like a if they're a thousand pages, pages, and this is a hundred thousand. There, there's five. There's five books at a thousand book, a thousand each. So it's like twenty. It'd be like fifty, like twenty to fifty uh, box sets of the series so far. Yeah, and uh, they are really trying to rush him through now. They're going to do the, you know, trial thing that they do with every Supreme Court nominee on Tuesday. And, you know, they want to do it because, uh, you know, if he gets in before the midterms and all of a sudden Trump gets indicted, then, you know... We're still stuck with him. We're still stuck with him because he can't indict a sitting president because the Supreme Court will have to fucking vote on that shit. And this is... Basically, step one to him becoming El Dictator Trump Cheeto. The El Cheeto Dictator is trying to become El Cheeto Dictator. Yep, this is scheduled for him to be already in office by the end of October, right before the midterms. So this is kind of the biggest story right now, and barely anyone's talking about it. Yeah. Trying to keep it hush-hush. Well, most of the media is still talking about John McCain's funeral. And that happened, like, earlier this week. Yeah, it happened like two, three days ago now. But this is recent and a lot more important. Well, it just goes to show you that they really, really, really like funerals. Anytime somebody dies, they have to do two, three, four days on them. Meanwhile, everyone's lives are going to be completely screwed up, and we have to live with it. Mm-hmm. Again, please, uh, Justin Trudeau, please annex the entire northern half of the United States. Thank you, all sane Americans. Yeah. You can even yeah. have North Dakota's oil. Yeah, the Democrats tried to stop this, but... Since they don't have any real power right now, they because couldn't do power anything. is only for those who have the majority right now. Because no one can flip sides. Oh my God, the other the other side is so evil. We can't possibly vote for sanity. Which is why almost all of the current Republicans are going to be replaced come the midterms. Let's fucking hope. If you're one with a big name, you are probably losing your election. You could run a toaster against someone like Ted Cruz, and it would probably win. <laughs> toaster would do a better job. I, mean, I, Ted Cruz probably doesn't even make his own toast, so that's oh, one point the toaster wins. Okay, on. this is something that we haven't even got on the docket. I'm gonna find it. Um, yep, there we go. Bamf. Okay. I'm going to post, post this in your section, Steve. Okay. Oh, dear. What have you thrown at me? <laughs> the thing we were talking about um, on um, oh, God, right. chat earlier this week that we did not have on the fucking thing. That we yeah, should somehow definitely talk we about forgot it. that. Okay. Ron DeSantis uh, won the 
Republican nomination to be governor replacing Rick Scott, who is running for Senate in Florida. Um, and he said, okay, he said, uh, you have to pretense this by uh, yeah. saying okay. that Who his opponent, his opponent is, is African American. Yeah, his opponent, Andrew Gill- Gillum, sorry if I butchered the name, became the Democratic nam- nominee and is a black man. And he called him an articulate spokesman and said, the last thing we need to do is to monkey this up by trying to embrace a socialist agenda with huge tax increases as bankrupting the state. Monkeying this up is the phrase that... <sighs> yes, your reaction is perfect. Oh my God. Black man monkeying this up fucking racist and this is a guy running for governor in florida and will probably win because he's republican in florida this is the state of florida man (laughs) oh and today there's been a rebuttal to it wait what yeah right on the sideline andrew gillum slams neo-nazi robocalls in florida as attempt to weaponize race oh god so there's neo-nazis robocalling against him in the state because and they're from Idaho. These are Idaho neo Nazis trying to get involved in the Florida gubernatorial le- election. They have no fucking reason to be fucking monkeying with Florida's election. Because they're out of state. They would not be legal to vote in the state of Florida for well, this I, guy. Or I, against I this guy. I, I don't think saying calling it monkeying is probably the appropriate word choice after the article there. Oops. Um Sorry. Yeah, interfering. So you were saying it about the white guy. But I was saying it about the white guy. The white guy is the one fucking shit up. Fucking white neo Nazis. They're they're the real apes. They are Neanderthals. No, they are Cro Magnum men. That is how far back they are. God. They are. (sighs) For them, the old days aren't the 1950s. It's back when you were allowed to beat women on the head with a club and drag them back to your (laughs) cave. Yes, exactly. There, this is this is just. Uh, how how is this twenty eighteen? This this is like uh eighteen fifties talk here. 18, 18, 18, BC. It's like all of these bad time periods just got together and became its own thing. Because we have like Nazis fighting communists. A new red scare. God, what else? Talk of a civil war. Oh yeah, definitely talk of civil war almost every day. They've been talking about a civil war almost every day since Obama got elected, though. But that was mostly from Alex Jones. And also nuclear, so I guess Cold War. Uh Yeah. All, uh, all, all the shitty parts of the last 100 are just coming together and fucking shit up. There's a reason they say history repeats itself. No because one no one actually learns. fucking learns. No one does it, does it have to repeat itself all at once? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, Barry Allen, Flashpoint, fucking with the timeline... One day we need to get the Flash on our show to answer for his crimes against humanity. <laughs> yeah, because we are in the coconut timeline. You're, you're breaking it up again, bro. Speak closer are, to your we microphone. Are, we are in the coconut bonkers timeline. <laughs> so <laughs> everything is a dumpster fire. Everything. Is... No, I. No one. Everything's going to shit, and no one has any idea what's going on. Oh my God! It was actually Clone Fiesta because, like. These clown things that happened, like, was it a year ago? That was 2016 with the clowns, I think. Oh my god, that was 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 terrifying. Last year was the movie It, but, you know. But before It came out was when everyone was dressing like clowns to scare people. Yeah, that was, like, right before the election, wasn't it? Yep. And it's almost like they were trying to impersonate the future president of the United States, uh, uh, Donald Trump. Oh my god. I only have one article left. 
and we've got 20 minutes. That we're going to do a Minnesota good, we're going to do a Minnesota goodbye again, aren't we? Yeah, Just we tend talk to random shit. We're actually so time this my, time. my last argument, I, I I feel we talk about Trump so much. So here's another Hillary Clinton one. <sighs> Hillary Clinton will headline three DNC fundraisers. Oh my god! Why? I'm not sure why they're doing this. We know that uh, Hillary hasn't been as present in the Democratic Party as a lot of other notable candidates. And like last week when we talked about Donna Brazil's little comment, or did we? Yeah, we did. Okay, just making sure about, about how the whole, she, the super she was like, we and still shit. have power. This is the kind of shit she was talking about. Yeah. So, so someone who is completely despised on the right and is despised by about half of the Democratic Party is headlining for the Democratic Party. And to be fair, the reasons why she's despised has a lot to do with Bernie and a lot to do with the fact that we really are fucking sick of hearing about Hillary Clinton. We've been sick about hearing about fucking Hillary Clinton since she was in the Senate. We were sick about it when she ran for president against Obama and then she was Secretary of State for eight fucking years. Yeah, she's just way too prominent and has been on the TV and every article since her husband ran the country. It's not that she would necessarily be the worst possible president. We're currently living in that potential reality here. The thing yeah. is that she's just been so entrenched in the status quo of everything, be it Democrat, Republican, just the general governmental legal bullshit, for the last 30 years that it's almost impossible to see anything positive changing under her guidance because of her close financial ties and personal ties to everyone. Uh, well, my problems with her are, for one, her foreign policy. She's a complete war hawk, and on her domestic policy, yeah, she has her hand in every single cookie jar. And it's only because of her being involved in politics as long as she has. She's, if she's the most, most corporate politician ever. This is you why we blood. voted for Bernie, which means that pray we will praise God, Allah, Jehovah, whomever, fucking Vishnu, whatever, if we get Elizabeth Warren running for president. Because I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Bernie Burners, the man's too old to run for president at this point. He's fucking 90. He's going to be like 93 by the time that the next election comes along. I mean, I, I might be wrong. Age, I'm going to check. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. He's he's older than Trump. He's and Trump's 70. So he's, you know, in his 80s. He's, so he's 76. Be, he'll be 80 by the time. Yeah. So he'll be well, 78. So yeah, yeah he'll be 80 by there. the time. So he's and four years with an 80 year old president would make him 84. Eight years would make him 88. I know life expectancy's really gotten long and medical advances and stuff, but he's got so much chance of being another Reagan with the whole getting Alzheimer's in office thing. Oh, yeah. So we don't want to risk that as a pr for someone as a president. We want to put him as maybe a vice president where he can, you know, help help make policies and stuff, but if something happens where he starts being a little loopy, they can replace him easier. Well, if he's president with Elizabeth Warren as vice president, and he dies in office after, say, like three years, Warren gets in for a year, and then she'll be the incumbent and likely to win again. I mean, yes, that makes a very clear point as well. Yes, Steve, I understand. It's just, why would you put him in as the president with that risk, whereas you have someone who would have him as basically, you know, 
the the, the guy to you know help her do yeah, the right thing. I was making the argument that he'd actually be better as a cabinet pick at this point than as a actual president. Yeah, put him in charge of some one thing that he's really fucking good with, like I don't know, education or healthcare, and motherfucker, bam. Just put him somewhere he can weed out the corruption. Well, there you go. So, in that case... Just get him somewhere in there. In that case, who would you pick for VP for Elizabeth Warren? I'd go Nina Turner. Um, I would uh, second that, um, but also I would like to say that what needs to be done is that we need someone from, like more of a non major party to be brought in as say a VP to broaden the appeal um to so someone who's actually fucking progressive and not in the democratic party um Jill Stein runs on her own so it wouldn't ha- it wouldn't be her but someone else of that caliber would be a great pick because they would be an outsider. They would appeal to the popula- the population that hates the current corruption and would love to see somebody who's, you know, different. And they'd still share the same, you know, uh, progressive left views. It'd be a blending. And it would probably actually bring the party as a whole more towards where we would like them to be as opposed to where they're currently heading, which is a schism that will break the party and probably wind up with the party losing overall because of that break. I honestly, Having two candidates, I, basically. I don't see someone like Elizabeth Warren picking a centrist Democrat as a VP just to heal the party any more than I could see someone like Joe Biden or Kennedy picking a progressive as VP. Yeah, that's the other thing. It's like Biden would have probably been a better pick than Clinton to run against Bernie. Um, well, at the time, Biden was a very successful meme. Well, oh, not just yeah, that, but the reason the reason why he, he did not run was a very personal one because he had just lost his son to cancer. Oh, so okay. he did not have the emotional energy to do a campaign. So I fully understand why. He probably also was slightly afraid of being another Al Gore, a VP trying to become president and failing. Um, I still don't like the idea of Biden. I don't either, especially now. Um, But he definitely would have been a better pick than Clinton. Yeah, Biden is very, very corporate. I think he'd be better than Kennedy. Kennedy. We're just in a very fucked up time right now. (laughs) Well, that's the thing, though, is I think the Democratic Party needs to destroy itself. Just need to to pull a hard left. They make it very, yeah, they make it very clear that progressives aren't welcome in the party and try to paint them as communist nut jobs. I mean, Republicans are already doing that enough anyway. Yeah, it's like they're echoing... Well, that's because the centrist Democrats are Republican light. Exactly. Like uh, Heidi Heitkamp. They are the Pepsi to the Republican Coca-Cola. They're they're the same as, say, um, fucking... Uh, Honestly, the Democrats are more like libertarians if you think about it. No, they're not, because they're not about, they're not as much about the freedoms as the actual libertarians are. They're more, they're more like what you used to call a fiscal conservative, or a, um, just conservative, because they are conservatives. Yeah, pretty much. They're, they're more progressive on social issues, but fiscally... Never give anybody a raise ever. No, because they've become entrenched in corporate policies. And once again, it wasn't always like this. It was actually Bill Clinton who started the trends of neoliberalism. neoliberalism. Yeah. Yeah. 
my tongue decided to go fuck itself for a second. Which, sadly, you know, most people don't follow politics, so nobody knows that Clinton started neoliberalism. No one knows about the repeal of Glass-Steagall or any of these other things that we're seeing the backlash for. Basically, Clinton was the president between two Bushes that began our current downfall. Because honestly, if George Bush Sr. had gotten a second term, it would have been better than Clinton ever fucking getting elected. I'm sorry. And the only reason why he didn't get reelected was because he, what, fucking raised taxes. The one thing that Republicans have not dared to do since Reagan, except once, he raised taxes. Oh God, taxes. you're right. I am right. I mean, yeah. And it's terrible he, that I'm saying a Republican unpop- is good. He was unpopular enough that if it hadn't been Clinton and he'd gotten that second term, yeah, we never would have had neoliberalism. We would have probably gotten a lot more left-leaning Democrat instead of Clinton. You mean Al Gore? Well, Al Gore, I mean, we don't even need to go into it, the whole Florida hanging chad thing. I know, right? But, yeah. They did something similar to that to a progressive recently. I I forget exactly which one, but a progressive got uh, shafted because they wouldn't let them look into the votes after. Shaft? I think think that may have been Jill Stein. Well... Um, True, but that happened to her, but that's not who I was talking about. Oh, okay. I want to say Beto O'Rourke, but I don't think that's right. Yeah, it's just, oh my god. This whole situation started with Clinton. It really did. And until we realize that and realize that Hillary is just like her husband and neoliberal, we will never get better as a country. We will never progress to actually start fixing the crap that's been undone over the last two decades. Well, Nearing like three I, Like now. I said a couple weeks ago, she is the genital wart that just won't be cured. She is democratic oh. form of herpes, yes. I don't know. We just need some younger politicians with better ideas. And we're getting a lot of them. The mainstream media is refusing to cover all of the progressives that won. Like, in Florida, it was four or five different progressives that won their uh, primaries. I know that we've got... Uh, well, it wasn't the progressive the one that won the... Uh, um, Democratic nod for governor? Yep. Yeah. And literally no one's fucking talking about that. Well, like I showed you on that one article on The Hill, they're still saying that this, the Democrats should have a centrist strategy instead of appeal, up, appealing to the, quote, socialist wing of the party. And that is the exact reason why the Democratic Party will probably win this election and lose again and lose because of a split in 2020. And my hope with this is that Trump gets booted um, and enough of his people get booted that some they have to go down the fucking line of succession far enough to where somebody liberal gets put in anyway. Um, The new Speaker of the House, possibly. Um, you know, um, which would probably wind up being, fuck, Nancy Pelosi, but... Oh, God. But, but, both parties would be completely fucked. They'd be trying to appease everybody, but nobody at the same time, because you'd have the right, the Republicans would be trying to appeal to the alt-right Trumpers and the centrists at the same time, Pleasing nobody, the party would be split into two fucking candidates, basically. You'd have two candidates on the Democratic side, and then either you wind up with one of one of those one, four winning with so little of the vote that they have, like, no fucking mandate at all for f- their whole term, 
while things get sorted, or you get a third party that creeps in and actually fucking wins for once. Well, yeah, if you if they do that strategy and somehow win with it, that just means another four more years of neoliberalism. Meanwhile, Republicans will continue going right. They're kind of trying to find their identity post-Trump. Yeah, they're going to have to try and find their identity, and they're pretty well fucked for at least a decade. Well, because most most sane people realize that they're damn near Nazis now. Yep. It's fucking terrifying. And terrible. And the weird part is that the group that still supports him the most is the evangelicals, somehow. Yeah, especially after all these uh, um, seedy encounters and payoffs of, like, you know, to cover up affairs with... At this point, I think he could wipe his ass with the Pope's hat and he wouldn't lose evangelicals. <laughs> Apparently he can do no wrong. To eyes. some of them. To some of them. Yeah. Uh, so is... yeah, he just has the evangelicals and the racists, and sadly that's still the 30% of the country that supports him. I mean, the 30% of the country that, or 30% of the voting part of the country, yes. I don't know whether or not that's actually 30% of the country or not. Probably closer to 25, at least I'd hope. Hopefully less. I think it's probably closer to 20, considering. Well, most people stayed home because their choice was gonorrhea or Nazis. I mean, if your choice was gonorrhea or Nazis, you'd stay home. No, I, I, I didn't. I, I voted for Jill Stein. I did too, but I think all three of us did. I'm just... Because Jill Stein would have been an awesome freaking president. She's basically the female version of uh, Bernie. I I understand that. I didn't vote for her, but just... I voted for her in 2012. I just figured that since she got such a low voter turnout in 20, it's like, not as confident that she would win. Yeah, she got less than 1%. And yet, according to the mainstream media, was the biggest reason why Hillary lost that under 1% of the vote. Which makes you wonder whether or not they that was actually under 1% of the vote, or if the votes were that rigged by the, by the Russia meddling that it was supposed to be way more percent of the vote. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm thinking, is that actually I think with how the DNC rigged their own elections, that they also rigged a lot of the polling places, and you can look that up where any place that didn't have paper ballots or backups, Hillary skyrocketed, but any place that did, it was neck and neck or Bernie won. Exactly. It's almost so I think, like I think they we need changed to go to paper all, ballots. I think they changed all of the Jill Stein votes, except for a small percent, to Clinton. And I think they did a lot of that same shit, probably on the Republican side, for Johnson. Yeah. I don't know. It's very possible because there's, there's no way, there's no way that that many people, especially with how many people I saw had third party freaking signs and stickers after what happened. Oh, I, yeah. I, I, I bought a couple of the pins. They say they voted third party and they Because this is, this is a semi-metropolitan area, and yeah, it was kind of fucked up. Speaking but of we'll that, know more when we finally oh, that get the also full reminds me. details. Uh, another article I saw but forgot to put in the thing. Apparently, a, some 11-year-old kid was able to hack the voting machines and within 30 minutes. It yeah, that's real did. safe. And what 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 did the Republicans remember to do? Um, they voted no on uh, securing our voting our voting before the midterms because it cost too much money. That's why they say, but in reality, they're doing it because it's likely that Russia will be able to come in and do the same exact damn thing. 
Yeah, if, I, if an 11 year I understand that they're so much better with technology were immersed in it at birth, but at the same time, it's kind of telling of what their security was in the first place. Very. <laughs> it seems that you just need to stick a USB in there with just some program that you can probably just find online to do it. Yeah. So uh, that is uh, that is real comforting news coming up on the election that an 11 year old can hack a voting machine yep we, we're we are in some very dark times and so the, the republicans just don't want to do anything about it not because of the money but because they're they're you know benefiting from it well everybody's been benefiting from it i guess apparently when we actually get Back to doing paper ballots and waiting weeks for actual, you know, results. Maybe, maybe we'll have some sanity return. Then they'll just go back to the old tactic of stealing and burning ballots. Mm, possibly. Ooh. You remember what the exit polls looked like for the for the Democratic Party, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they didn't match up at all. And nope. they just ignored it. So was it wasn't yes. this like a movie back in the yeah, Cl- Clinton moment? flat out cheated. Yep. Clinton cheated, Trump cheated. They're and all cheaters. CNN and them are all all just playing up the Oh, are you regretting talking about her emails now? And I'm just sitting here over here like she had her cronies destroy a bunch of votes and change the votes. Debbie Wasserman Schultz was literally fired over this. And then Donna Brazil came in and was like a, you know, Debbie Wasserman Schultz light. And then came out and wrote a book about how all of this bullshit. Mm-hmm. It is well documented the levels of fuckery that happened at the DNC in 2016. But they want they try to paint progressives as Alex Jones conspiracy theorists. That's not cool. It, they they've done so they they've said it so so clearly. It's almost like the the daily Trump tweets. Yeah, they they've literally left a paper trail. They, they used um, sound machines to drown out the applause when Bernie was on stage. And they set the cameras at certain angles to make it look like Clinton had bigger turnouts than she actually did. Well, yeah, of course. Trump did the same thing. Yeah, and they also had people with Hillary signs stand up front in front of anyone who had Bernie signs, and they kicked out some of the people who had Bernie signs. And Nina Turner walked out of the freaking convention over this, which is why I respect her so damn much. Mm-hmm. In fact, as much as I like Elizabeth Warren, I yeah, Nina Turner, I think, would be the absolute best. Turner Warren would be a great can would be a great matchup. But given the racial tensions right now in the U.S., I think that it would probably sadly still be an issue if Nina Turner ran as the president. Warren would have a better chance of winning, because which white. sucks because, yeah, exactly because white. Whereas I think Turner is even more progressive than Warren. But Warren's not bad either. She has come out against a lot of corruption Oh yeah, she done good work. But that's yeah. about time. We kind of went on like, a tangent about corruption well, and shit there, but hey, well, the last article was about do. Clinton. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, basically they should have retitled that article. Hillary Clinton should go away. <laughs> <laughs> I I guess I don't know. Um, everything that has been said i will agree with that one but yep it's we actually ended two two hours even just about this was a pretty good show 
How did you enjoy your time, Mary? As a special last minute guest who may have a little bit of echo, but if you ever come back, we'll just have to have you both on one mic or something. It was great. Yay. Progress. I think Frosty needs a new mic. No, I don't need a new mic. I... He says as he cuts out. <laughs> he says as he cuts no, out. No, I'm, I'm That's because look... he's not facing his microphone. That's because I wasn't facing my microphone. <laughs> oh, okay. He's been doing so... that. He's been facing, like, the window for some reason. <laughs> no, so I was looking, I was looking <laughs> in the direction of your Code Geass fabric poster. Okay, so it's not a tech problem. <laughs> no, it's a meat problem. It's a meat it's problem. A problem. It's a, ooh, thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> also, I had my mic on the far left side of the desk. Uh, but I didn't want to move it during the actual cast. Mine is comfortably placed in front of me. I'm thinking of saving up money to get myself a boom so that I don't have the feedback problem I sometimes get. I would really oh. love to get a boom, but that's one of the things that I have my donations for. My donation yeah. bar for. Yeah. I, I did that too now. But yeah, thank thank you guys for uh, coming out. All of you who've watched uh, or listened now and in the future, uh, this has been the fully rebranded Atomic Silver Lining. You know, your silver lining in that lovely mushroom cloud that's about to come down, and you know, showing off all the games and entertainment news and the current craziness of the political state that will hopefully not end in our doom, but very well might. Uh, this has been Diz Don. Frosty. And Steve. With a special guest. Very, very. So, uh, that's been us for today, and I'm gonna do our theme. Where the hell are you? Music! Play with Mindo. Mindo's Media media Player. Mindo's Media Player. Alright. We'll catch you next week. Same time. Space Force! God damn it, Steve. <laughs> All right.